So, you'll notice I talk a lot about movies on this channel, and then I dissect them to illustrate how you should write your books. And some of you have asked me, why not use books? Well, it's because there's too many books. Each year, close to a million new books are published, every year. In contrast, only around a thousand movies are released each year, so the odds are greater that we've seen the same movie rather than read the same book. Especially since I only read indie published books now. Still, there are significant differences between stories written for movies and ones written for books. That's what I'm going to go over in this video. Hi Noveltiers, I'm Devin Blake, novel writing and self-publishing expert, coach, published author, and former ghostwriter of 200 books. If you're writing a book, check out my Novel Writers Club in the description below. So what is the difference between writing for books and writing for a movie? Well, the first difference is that movies take an expansive view, while books need a more intimate view. In other words, a movie starts with zooming out and then zooming in, like the way a camera does a big pan of a city or a room before focusing on a character in that city or room. However, a book actually starts inside someone's head and then expands outward to see the city, room, or landscape around them. Another way they're different is because of how they start. A movie that starts with a fight or a car chase or a pan of a city or an expansive landscape is interesting. A book that does that is boring. Why? Because without the visuals, we can't connect to the landscapes or settings or the fight or the chase. We connect to people, not events. We haven't met any people yet, so these events mean nothing to us. Showing us what your character is thinking about their environment or event is much more effective. In fact, in a book, everything is filtered through the character's thoughts and worldview rather than the objective lens of a camera. And this brings us to our next point. Oftentimes, things that are exciting in movies are boring in books, and vice versa. I mentioned fights and car chases, but even things like horror stories where the killer blows up a city are not impressive in books. It's just a stroke of a pen, no special effects or anything. We're not seeing it happen with our imaginations, even if you have the best imagination. So we don't really care unless there's a character in that building that we care about. Because that's what makes us care. Emotions and actions need to be shown and expressed much more than in the movies. We don't have the benefit of watching an actor arch their brows or fiddle with their hands or having their eyes drawn to something. You have to tell us the character is doing that. We also don't have the benefit of music to influence our emotions about a scene. Any influencing that needs to be done needs to be done through words and situations only. Of course, books allow for a greater freedom of expression and storylines as opposed to movies. Since we're seeing it through the eyes of a character, it's easier to impart a sense of wonder, dread, or hopelessness. It's also easier to create an unreliable narrator with a shocking twist that no one saw coming, or a villain's point of view without revealing who the villain actually is. These are things you can do in books. This is much harder to do in a movie, but it's not impossible. You can also make more use of the senses in a book than you can in a movie. Movies appeal to only two senses, sight and sound. But books can actually appeal to all the senses by invoking smells, touch, feelings, and taste. This is exactly why some stories, like the Narnia series, make such awful movies and such wonderful books. For example, Voyage of the Dawn Treader is an amazing book full of wonder. It is completely wrong to show on the screen. When they made Voyage of the Dawn Treader for the screen, that is like, that is not remotely the book at all. You can go deeper and harder than you can with a book than you can with a movie, because books are written for niches, while movies are made for masses. For example, everyone would agree that the movie Gone Girl, Amy was a horrible person. But movie Amy was actually a Girl Scout compared to book Amy, and that ending in the book was so much more of a gut punch than the ending in the movie. The movie and the ending left you shocked, but the book ending completely destroyed you. I Am Legend is another book that is more powerful in its book form, specifically because it is a book. And while this book has been turned into about five different movies and has inspired many other movies, not one of the movies has had the courage to use the book's real ending. Apparently it doesn't test well, but that's what makes that book so amazing. So while the rules of storytelling for books versus movies are the same for the most part, they're also vastly different. 
Without the movie conventions of actors, visuals, and music, your book is forced to take a more intimate look at events and filter them through the point of view of a character. But instead of being limiting, this enables you to have a greater self-expression through utilizing the senses, making the character's thoughts the actual draw instead of the action alone. If you'd like to know more about how to write a book, check out the Novel Writers Club at the link below. It features weekly crits, community, self-directed courses, a library of genres, tropes, and a whole lot more. It can help you start and finish your novel. Also remember to like and subscribe to see more videos on writing and publishing your book. Until next time, this is Devlin Blake saying right on.